Good morning, America. Again, this is your foreign war correspondent. No, I'm sorry. It just, the humor helps. <laughs> um, but I do have a bone to pick with you guys that are watching my uh, videos. I think your prayers are slipping. I'm needing your help. Uh, let me kind of explain. Yesterday, I traveled about 13 hours to get to my new base camp in a, a new city closer to the hot zones because it's easier for me to get to where I need to get and get out um, than traveling 13 hours because that just makes for a longer trip. Um, and in the last two days, just two days, um, we had some problems at my house. Um, <laughs> no, this not to blame anybody. Actually, it's kind of funny, right? But uh, my wife actually, we actually have a farm, and on the farm we uh, have chickens, obviously, and, and the chickens make eggs, and we sell the eggs to a, a local supermarket, right, as a way to kind of cover the cost of having our own fresh eggs. I'm not saying we're making a lot of money doing it. We're just doing it because that's what we like to do, and we like to have farm fresh eggs and so on and so forth. So um, unfortunately, we had 24 chickens and a raccoon and a fox have been stealing our chickens. So we made it from 24 down to, I think, 16. So in an effort to get our eggs back up on track, we bought some more, when I say we, I mean my wife, uh, bought some more little chicks to start raising. And as you know, on little chicks, you gotta put them in um, a box and, and then put a, um, a lamp on them so they can get warmed up. Well, turns out the little chicks jumped on a lamp, knocked it down, the lamp at the wood shavings, and it started a fire. Not bad. I'll attach a, a picture, right? No one got hurt. Uh, we did not have chicken wings. The chickens are all okay. The house did not burn down. It did a pretty good job on the box, though. Um, so I, I, uh, I think that was one thing that was a little bit scary. Then after that, my son was out in the back of our woods uh, working on his base, having some fun time off for his week off of school, right? And with his steel-toed boots on, he swung an axe and cut his toe. Had to go to the emergency room. Um, eight stitches to get his toe. I'll put up a picture for you on that one as well. Um, and you gotta understand, one thing, is, as a dad, you can't get angry at those things. Um, my finger, if you can see, is crooked because I cut my finger clean off like this when I was in, I think, the fourth or fifth grade because I did something similar and stupid. So I'm not angry. These are things that, that boys do, right? Um, but the thing that makes you nervous is my poor wife had to go to the emergency room and talk to the doctors and then find another doctor uh, in order to check and see if he hit his growth plate. And English is not her first, second, or third language. So it's a little bit more difficult for her to understand what's going on. Uh, praise God my sister is around and was able to, to help her out with those things. But so the chicken's burning up, my son getting eight stitches. And then, of course, uh, yesterday, I got some other news, some happy news. My wife is 10 weeks pregnant. How about that? Uh, I'm really excited. I already know it's gonna be a girl. We have no idea, it's only 10 weeks, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be a girl. So there's four kids. That was four, one finger was missing. Um, so I'm really excited about that, but it makes me feel like a bad dad. I'm here, my wife's 10 weeks pregnant at home, trying to take care of everything on her own, right? And that adds a little bit of joy, quite a bit of stress. How do I do, get home? What do I do? Uh, do I stay here and keep going on? Obviously, first 10 weeks, we got a couple more weeks, or a couple more months before um, she kind of gets laid up because my wife's really tiny and it's harder for her to do things. So I have to get home to be able to help take care of the other kids so it doesn't stress her out and make the, the pregnancy a bad thing. Then on top of that, um, uh, the place that I was supposed to go today um, they called me up and said, hey, listen, uh, pastor got drafted. They pulled him into the military um, tomorrow, meaning today's, well, I can't tell you. Today, tomorrow is Passover or Easter. Right? In Russian, it's the same word, Pascha. Right? So they said, hey, listen, uh, pastor called me up and said, listen, if you're not doing anything tomorrow, would you please go and preach Sunday service? Sure. Uh, except preaching a Sunday service is one thing. Preaching Sunday Easter service is different. Preaching Sunday Easter service in Russian at a church you've never been to before is something a little bit different because you have to uh, coordinate who's going to do what, who's gotten this, are we having the Lord's Supper, is there going to be dinner afterwards, for how long, who's come, like, 
there's quite a bit more into it. And I have to write out a sermon, right, um, in English, and then see if what it is I'm trying to say in English works in Russian. No more stress out of that one. Uh, and then this morning, uh, actually about 15 minutes ago, I got a call from my friend uh, whose parents are actually in the city that I'm supposed to go preach at tomorrow. And last night, I will put up a video. There was a little bit of shelling going on in the city. And then this morning, they it started to get a little bit stronger, and there was some shooting going on, not just some shelling. Right? Don't forget, this is the place that I'm supposed to go preach um, Passover service tomorrow, or Easter service tomorrow. Right? And he's like, get the stuff. Uh, we got to go get them. So I just got jumped in the van, or jumped in the van, jumped in the new car. I right? got it cleaned out so there's enough place to put some people, and was starting to drive to the city. He's like, nope, nope, they got out. They got back across the bridge, so we're safe. Right? So all that to say, yes, it's an interesting time. Um, but where are you guys in your prayers? It wasn't like this the first time, right? I had no problems at home. Everything was safe. Everything was good. Um, so just asking you guys to keep up those prayers. Um, like I said before, sometimes I think, and this might be just a total man illustration, right? But if you've ever taken a chainsaw and you try to put a chain through a, ch chainsaw through a log, right? And everything's the way it's supposed to be. You got a nice sharp a blade, it's full of the oil to run the saw, it just goes through like butter. No issues, no problems, right? But if you keep going and you don't uh, fill up the oil tank back in, right? And you cut through on a hot chain without any oil on it, it will dull your blade. If you dull your blade, it's gonna take you a lot longer. It'll still cut, it's just a lot more work, right? A lot of times I think the Holy Spirit works like that oil. Actually, I think there was a, an old preacher, I don't remember his name at the moment, it'll come back to me. Uh, he used to preach that the Holy Spirit was like the oil, right? That it's just what makes the job easier and faster and smoother. So if you guys wouldn't mind, please, uh, praying that things would go smooth, that I'm able to still hear the Holy Ghost, whether it's good for me to go into dangerous positions, a safe, dangerous situations, or if it's good for me to wait. Because he knows what I'm supposed to do and when I'm supposed to do it, and I just want to be able to listen to what he's, he's saying and do what it is he wants me to do when he wants me to do it. All right, so yes, congratulations are in order. I am going to be a dad for the fourth time. Uh, I am safe. I have not been shot at or bombed. We do hear sir, uh, sirin. The early warning signals um, every single night. It was actually nice. We were standing outside looking at the beautiful sky, listening to the sirens go off. Um, but I have not been bombed or shot at this time. Last time, but, but not this time. So please pray for the service tomorrow. Please pray for the Holy Spirit to work and for me to encourage these people that um, definitely need encouragement. They're in an area where buildings are being blown up and they could use some encouragement. Um, please pray for my wife, for her health, for an easy pregnancy. Please pray for my kids and for the farm that nothing else is going on wrong there. Again, thank you for the financial support um, that has helped us to be able to do the things that we're doing, to be able to get the things that we're getting into these places. The insulin was great. It was needed. As a matter of fact, I've ordered two more batches of the insulin. Some coming in from Turkey, some coming in from uh, Chernov Sea. As there need some more. Uh, right now, I think they're good on their bandages and on their levothyroxine. Um, and the presents, I have not got a chance to get out. It was a little bit too stressful for me to give them out to the soldiers. It's more important that they have bullets than that they have um, chocolate bars. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Uh, please keep me in your prayers. We, I need this. Uh, we need this. Ukraine needs this. Um, and please let us have a peaceful and joyful Easter. Thanks, guys. Bye.